since we are about to revise continuity again. So in PUC1, in PUC1 you studied Chanageshav, I am here. In PUC1 you studied limits, do you remember that? Yes. Do you want me to revise limits again or should we do, to, do continuity? No. I will just quickly tell you what was limit? What was limit? In PUC1 you studied limits, right? Huh? What was limit? What is the meaning of limit? Limit was basically understanding how a function of x, if you have the variable x, how a function of x behaves. Limit was basically understanding how a function of x behaves when the, when the variable x does not exactly take a value but tends to go towards a value. But tends to go towards a value. Say for example, you have the value 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. If I take, suppose x tends to go towards 1 but never exactly reaches 1, never exactly reaches 1, then how will fx behave? How will a function fx behave? It will also behave in a similar way. It will also tend to go towards some particular value. The function fx will also tend to go towards a particular value but will never reach that value. Then that value for fx will be called the limit of fx, will be called the limit of fx. Now when suppose instead of 1 in general if we take a, instead of 1 in general if I take a, then when x tends to go towards a, x tends to go towards a but never exactly reaches a, then the function fx, any function of x, it can be a polynomial function, x squared, x cubed, these and that, it can be a trigonometric function, sin x, cos x, anything, logarithmic, log x, exponential, e power x, anything, any function of x, it will also behave in a similar way, it will tend to go towards a particular value but will never reach that value, then that value will be called the limit of the function, isn't it? We studied it in PUC1, right? Now what is continuity? For that, let us quickly remember a few things like, say for example, C, the variable x can go to this A from this side, isn't it? Coming to A from the left side of A, coming to A from the left side of A, left side of A means values less than A. Say, suppose if A is 1, x can start from 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.99999 like that coming to 1 from the left side or coming to a from the left side then then the number towards which or the value towards which fx will also behave in a similar way that particular value will be called the what left hand limit of fx what limit left hand limit of fx and we write it like this limit x tends to a minus fx, isn't it? When x goes to a from the left side of a, then the function fx will also behave in a similar way towards a particular value, that value will be called the left hand limit of fx, isn't it? And how do we write it? Limit x tends to a minus fx. This limit, we can write it lim or we can also write it as capital LT. You can write it lim or you can also write it capital LT, same thing, any one you can prefer, okay. So this is called the left hand limit of fx, isn't it, when x goes to a. Similarly, if we consider the other case, if you consider the other case that when x comes to a from the, this time, right side, from the right side, that is from values greater than a, right side means greater, no? So if x this time comes to a from the right side of a, then the limit of the function fx that will be called the right hand limit, that will call the RHL, right hand limit and how do we denote it? Limit x tends to a plus f of x, limit x tends to a plus f of x, isn't it? And when these two right hand and left hand limits 
when the left hand and right hand limits they both exist sometimes it may happen the limit values may not exist they may go to infinity they may be undefined they may not exist if both these limits exist and both of them are equal if both of them exist and are equal then we say that then we say that the limit of the function f exists at x equal to a the limit exists at x equal to a and that limit value will be equal to each of these values say each of them is equal to the value l then we say that the limit of fx exists at x equal to a and the value is l okay isn't it now what is continuity what is continuity continuity is basically defined like this continuity is basically defined like this a function fx is said to be continuous at a point a function fx is said to be continuous at a point say c when is it said to be continuous if limit x tends to c f of x the limit value exists okay we took a na let us take a a function fx is said to be continuous at a point x equal to a when when the limit of the function exists at x equal to a and that value of the limit will be equal to f of a that is it will be equal to the value of the function at the point the value of the function exactly at the point because we know that what is the limit value limit value is not like exactly going there limit value is like it tends to go there but never reaches there so if we see that the limit are you okay you need water give us some water if we see that the limit value of fx exists at x equal to a the limit of fx exists at x equal to a and that limit value that limiting value is exactly equal to f of a it is exactly equal to the value of the function at x equal to a then we say that the function fx is continuous function fx is continuous at x equal to a fx is continuous at x equal to a when if this clear if this how will it look like say if this is the point a say if this is the point a then the graph of fx will look like this it will be definitely continuous at this point the graph of fx will look like this somewhere it may look like this say look at this point at this particular point is the graph of fx continuous no there is a break there is a jump there is a break it is not continuous but if it is continuous at continuous at x equal to a it will definitely look like this the graph will be the graph will be what continuous there will be no break isn't it so in mathematical language in form formulas or in terms of expressions how can we write it fx is continuous at x equal to a if the limit of fx at x equal to a will be equal to the value of the function at x equal to a okay this is the definition of continuity this same definition we can also write it in another way what way from the definition of limit from the definition of limit we know that the limit value of fx the limit value of fx at x equal to a is actually nothing but equal to the left hand limit and the right hand limit yes or no so we can write this definition in an expanded form what expanded form this is actually equal to the left hand limit yes or no what do you know the limit will exist just now we revised the limit will exist if the left hand limit equal to if the left hand limit equal to what the limit of fx will exist at x equal to a if the left hand limit equal to right the right hand limit 
is the left hand limit equal to the right hand limit. So the definition of continuity we can also write it in this way that the left hand limit of fx should exist at x equal to a when x goes to a the left hand limit of fx should exist and that should be equal to the right hand limit of fx when x goes to a and that should be equal to the value of the function f at a. Clear? Is it clear? Hmm? So this is your basic definition of continuity. Any questions till now? We can use any one of these definitions. Basically the first one is the definition of continuity. The second one is the expanded form. In the expanded form we can say that what? When does the limit exist? The limit exists of a function fx at any point x equal to a. If the left hand limit of fx when x goes to a is same as the right hand limit when x goes to a. When both left hand limit and right hand limit will be equal, then the limit exists. No? And that should be equal to f of a. What is this value? This value is actually equal to this and this. This value is actually equal to this and this, l. Yes or no? So sometimes in some questions, you will be needing to use this one. You may need to use the first, first one or the second expanded form, depending on how your question is given or depending on how your function is defined. Okay? Quickly note it down. Anyone who wants to note it down, quickly do that. Note down both the definitions if you want to do that. Done? Are you okay? Drink water? No. Any questions, anyone, any queries? Gagana, Mati? What happened? Don't feel like writing? Okay. No worries, no worries. Okay, very good, no worries. Your copy, your studies, your wish. What to say? You feel like saving your ink? You can save your ink. So when is fx said to be continuous at any point x equal to a? When the limit of fx at x equal to a will be equal to value of the function at a, f of a. Isn't it? Or we can also say it in expanded form. When the left hand limit equal to the right hand limit. When the left hand limit equal to the right hand limit also equal to the value of the function at a. Then you say that, then we say that the function is continuous at x equal to a. Okay. Clear? Noted? Can I raise the board? Everyone? Oh. So as I said, sometimes you may need to use the basic definition, limit extends to a, fx equal to fa. Or sometimes you may need to use the left hand limit, right hand limit and this. When do you need to use the first one and when do you need to use the second one? When do we need to use the first one and when do we need to use the second one? The first one we need to use if your function is defined in the same manner when f does not go to a. If your function is defined in the same manner when x is not equal to a and in a different manner when x equal to a. And the second one we will use if your function is defined in one manner when x is on the left side of a for that you have to find left hand limit and the function is defined in a another manner in another manner when x is on the right side of a for that you have to find the right hand limit and a function has a third definition when f goes to a isn't it let us see for example do this question find this is the most common type of questions which are bound to come which is bound to come in your exams find the value of k such that find the value of k such that the function f is continuous at x equal to 3 and your fx is defined like this. Mm. 
my mistake just a moment noted is it done okay so how to do this question find the value of k such that the function f is continuous at x equal to 3 k is minus 30 minus 30 okay see here so tell me one thing in this the given function is f isn't it now this given function f is it defined in a separate way on the left of 3 or right of 3 no if x is equal to 3 there is a definition but if x is not equal to 3 there is a single definition that means when x is on the left of 3 when x is on the left of 3 it will follow this definition and when x is on the right of 3 it will follow the same definition isn't it on the left and on the right it will follow the same definition of f of x isn't it your function f will follow the same definition when x is on the left of 3 as well as on the right of 3 that is why here which which continuity definition will you use first one isn't it which condition first one there is the direct definition what is the definition yes here what is given fx is continuous at x equal to 3 so if fx is continuous at x equal to 3 since fx is what continuous at x equal to 3 therefore by definition what do we have limit x tends to 3 f of x should be equal to the value of the function f at 3 value of function at 3 so now what is the value of the function at 3 4 and when x goes to 3 when x is going to 3 or approaching 3 or when x tends to 3 how is the function fx defined when x goes to 3 when x goes to 3 what is the what is the idea of limit the idea of limit is that when x goes to 3 it never actually reaches 3 it will reach very close to 3 but never exactly becomes equal to 3 that means you have to use the definition when x is not equal to 3 yes or no you have to use the definition when x is not equal to 3 and what is the definition of fx 2x minus k by 2x plus 3 that should be equal to 4 isn't it that should be equal to 4 clear manas now evaluate the limit how do you evaluate limit put directly x value here isn't it if it has a value we can proceed but if it comes out to be in one of the indeterminate forms we cannot proceed we have to apply some special method do you remember the indeterminate forms while evaluating a limit if the limit value comes out to be some indeterminate form 0 by 0 infinity by infinity 0 power 0 or infinity power infinity if the limit value comes out to be one of these indeterminate forms we cannot directly evaluate the limit isn't it indeterminate forms indeterminate means the limit has no no definite value no it, the value cannot be determined 
isn't it? Indeterminate. Value cannot be determined. Then we have to apply some specific rules in limits you studied in PUC1. You have to apply some specific rules like rationalization, factorization, some methods you have to apply. Huh? Or we can apply L. Hopital rule. Huh? Maybe we need to apply L. Hopital rule. When do we apply L. Hopital rule? Zero. For 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, isn't it? Mostly we find for 0 by 0. We have to apply what rule? L. Hopital rule. Isn't it? Like that. So, 